Jakub, Karo is success. I'm a tech one. All right, thank you, thank you, Jora. Good, uh, good, uh, good afternoon and good evening, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, in the name of ARPA Institute, I welcome everybody. We are glad today we will have the Honorable Minister of High Technology Industry, Mr. Haik Chobanyan with us. But before we start, I'd like to say a few words about ARPA, our activities in Armenia, and what we do in general in Armenia. First of all, we send our announcements by email. So if you receive the announcement, it means we have your email. If we don't, then it means you can put your email address in the chat room so we can send directly the announcements to you next time around. And also all our work in Armenia is based on the community donations. We are a nonprofit charitable organization and your donations will be tax deductible if you are in the US. So please donate so that we can do more in Armenia. We have several different projects that are ongoing in Armenia. One of them is the clean room in the national lab, the Alekhanian National Lab, which was the former physics institute, the director of which is Ani Abrahamian, Dr. Ani Abrahamian, who is with us today, actually. And actually the work has already started we have already shipped the necessary filtration system and the air conditioning system and the renovations are in progress. And so the work is already in progress. And we would like everybody who is interested in helping science and technology in Armenia to please donate so we can complete this task. We also have a quantum technology initiative for Armenia. We believe that quantum technology is one of the most important technologies that needs to be addressed and established in Armenia. And we had worked with the Central Bank uh, and also the World Bank, and they were both working with us, but then due to the coronavirus, things have stopped and we have to start reactivating this, these projects again, once everything is settled down. We also do help establish small businesses in the border villages. We have actually established five small businesses thus far. What we do is we receive proposals for a small business and then we guide them to write a pro pro proper proposal and a business plan. And we guide them also in terms of how they can become profitable. And then we provide the necessary equipment and the guidance so that they can start. One of these businesses is a tailoring business and it has already created a, a few jobs in, uh, Berta uh, in uh, one of the villages, I forget the name. Uh, we also have this year for the first time in Armenia, organized with the Ministry of Science, Education, Culture and Sports, the first science fair of schools in Armenia for the, for actually this, this year it was only for high school students. And there were 42 projects presented and it was, uh, it was done in the, um, in the University of Architecture in Armenia near the Polytechnic University. And uh, the two of the winning projects for the first time in history actually of Armenia participated in the International Science and Engineering Fair 
that was this year done via Zoom. And actually one of these projects won fourth place. A, an award of $500 were given to them. And I think this is a tremendous success for the first year. And the plan is for next year to try to include as many schools of Armenia as possible. The main objective being that the students will learn how to be innovative, how to start a project, organize it, carry out research about the topic that they select, and then present it to a, a few judges, be able to pre uh, present it in such a way that it is convincing enough so they win the project. So this teaches them how to think in a scientific manner and solve problems with the scientific method. We also have, of course, our annual invention competition for young scientists. This is actually the 12th year that we have been uh, carrying out this program. And unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, this year we only received three projects, but we have changed the model. And right now we are, we are more asking for a dual purpose projects that will not only be a research project, but also will be an application oriented specifically for defense purpose purposes if possible. So out of these three projects that we have received, we are now asking for a full proposal. And then once we decide which is the best project, we are going to give them $5,000 and guide them so, so that they can become a productive uh, or production oriented project. We also have programs with other institutes of the Academy of Sciences, like the Molecular Biology Institute, the director of which Dr. Arsen Arakelian is with us here again, with the um, Physical Research Institute of Ashtarak, with the Nash Alejandro National Lab, as I stated, and the universities, both the, uh, the Erevan State University and the Polytechnic. We provide them with um, with instrumentation. And also we have a special program called the distance learning program, where we find experts from all fields, all over from all over the world. And again, over the internet, we present the latest technology developments, both for the students and for the professors. The main idea is technology transfer. And we also, of course, have this um, um, a new project, which is related to the Heruni um, radio frequency antenna on Ar uh, Aragats. We are trying to reactivate it so that it can be connected to the European um, uh, network of radio antennas and also for astrophysicists to do research and make measurements for, from, these, uh, from this uh, antenna. We have found experts around 12 different, uh, both uh, astrophysicists and also technical experts. And we have been having quite a few Zoom meetings from um, experts from all over the world. And they are all excited to renovate this, um, this antenna. And also we work on a, a radio frequency photo multiplier tube, which is being carried out again in the Alejandro National Lab by Amur Margarian and his team. And we think that this is a very important project because it can lead to quite a few applications, something like, for example, microscopes, uh, fast uh, cameras, and many other photonic applications, which could have a great impact on developing various, uh, even startups and jobs in Armenia. And we continue uh, working with 
um, the universities and the Academy of Sciences. And the only activity that we organize outside of Armenia is this seminars and panel discussions and interviews on various topics related to Armenia and Armenians in general. Our former activities, of course, included many others that um, we can go into, but uh, due to time limitations, I would like now to uh, invite our host, uh, Dr. Anisha Bazian, who is a professor in uh, Loyola Marymount University and is the secretary of the ARPA Institute Board of Directors. Ani, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Panosyan. Welcome. Good evening to those of you joining from Armenia, including our speaker. And good morning to those of you joining um, uh, from here, <laughs> from LA. Um, thank you to the ARPA Institute um, for featuring this conversation with the Honorable Minister Haig Chobanyan. Through their steadfast work in Armenia, as Dr. Panosyan was just mentioning, it's just some highlights of the ARPA Institute continues to serve as a steady reminder for us all that progress can be made together. Our objective with our time here today is to share some of the thinking about our current post-war state, focusing on the main challenges facing the high technology industry and the important role that this sector can play towards the future development of Armenia. I look forward to us all listening closely and get, engaging with our speaker. I would like to give voice to you. Um, and so as always, I will ask a series of questions as the interviewer to address what I would like to think you would like to hear. Um, and then I will open up the audience, the questions to the audience and you can um, go ahead and put your questions in the chat box um, after our Q&A in the beginning in case it gets covered during the Q&A. Um, and so let me here tell you a little bit about our speaker here today. Haig Chobanyan is the Minister of High Tech Industry of Armenia. He graduated from the Yerevan State University and from the Academy of Public Administration. Minister Chobanyan's work experience is diverse and multifaceted, starting with editorials of economic development to serving as the CEO of Information Analytical Center in Nork. Haig has served on the board and later as deputy director of the Union of Information Technology Enterprises of Armenia and was appointed and director of this union expo in 2018, as well as on the board World Information Technology Service Alliance. He founded the Arpi Solar and Solar Energy and Free Energy Companies. As governor of Tavush Mars, he has achieved significant improvements in the lives of the people in the region. His expertise comprises of industrial energy efficiency, marketing ITO, IT program, and financial management. CMMI capability maturity model integration, e-governance and learning, IT policy, process and quality management, and information strategy development. Minister Chobanyan has been the national coordinator of the EU Digital Market Harmonization Program, a member of the EU Private Sector Development Assistance Center, the ICT Forum for South and Eastern European, director of Tavush Spiritual Revival Foundation, and the founder of the Sustainable Energy Development Fund, as well as the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Real School Foundation. His awards include the Medal of Marshal Bahramyan, the Gold Medal of YSU, Yerevan State University, the Gold Medal of the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs of the RA, and a number of diplomas and letters of gratitude. Thank you for your time here today, Minister Chobanyan. I'd like to start by asking you a series of questions regarding just laying the groundwork and just talking about what is the role, if you can talk a little bit about it, what is the role of the high tech sector in the perspective of development of Armenia? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me greet all of you and 
thank you for the projects you have implemented and are implementing in Armenia. Thank you for your participation in our life, for your role. And uh, for me, it's an honor to speak today with such an honorable audience. And I think that today we will start a discussion uh, which will continue very long with the, with the real successes and success stories with the real results. So uh, coming to the IT sector of Armenia, I would like to emphasize uh, that the main component, main, main issue or, or the main, uh, main challenge what we have actually is in, uh, is in uh, education. That's why uh, I think that we should start mainly from the education. Uh, this, is, this is not a new issue. I actually, I remember that we are discussing this issue already at least 10 years that we have a lack of experience and knowledge people in the field. Now we are uh, about 20,000 engineers in the field, which is, uh, which is very, very, very small, uh, very small uh, concerning with the uh, demand what we have in the, in the country and in the world in this field. So the first, uh, of course, uh, we, are, we are thinking about high education because usually uh, higher education is providing uh, the appropriate specialist to the sector. Uh, the high technology sector is of exceptional importance for ensuring sufficient development of Armenia. I think we all agree that our country has no other way to have real significant development. We will face serious challenges throughout our future the way to overcome them is a powerful um, steadily developing innovation economy, which cannot but uh, rely on a powerful and developing science. Therefore, uh, we have the only way to ensure the sustainable development of our country and people, and that is strong and competitive educational system. I am very convinced that Armenia and the Armenian people can be safe only when our country has the highest quality level of education in the world. Education must become an Armenian religion and movement. Industry and higher or professional education must be one whole where industry must act as a customer. There is a lot of talk that universities do not provide enough knowledge to students so that graduates meet the requirements of business. And it's a re uh, reality that companies are implementing a mass of training programs to overcome the crisis. So actually the main companies uh, in Armenia uh, has this kind of training program programs. In my opinion, the problem should be solved like this debate where the solution is the implementation of significant changes in universities. We must be consistent and demanding on these issues because it can no longer continue like this. First, the education system must be reviewed and uh, uni universities must become free. This is a critical issue. If we want the university to be motivated not by quantity, but quality, I think this transition, uh, transition is critical. Minister, you, you, the, yes. Minister Trabanian, sorry to interrupt you. I'm curious if you can be a little bit more specific about the kind of cooperation there is between the industry, the ministry, and the universities, the educational institutions and to ensure that they are all in line in working towards Armenia's growth in this particular sector. Uh, like what kind of measures are they considering specifically in terms of university education, 
or even through K through 12. Like as an educator, my, my, I myself am very curious to see what measures um, are you considering of instituting in K through 12 schools? Uh, you know, uh, already, I, as I mentioned, already 10 years we are speaking about the main issues in the sector. And now uh, we understand that the main issue what we have in, in the education, that's why I am emphasizing this, and especially it's about uh, high education. The sector implemented a lot in the, a lot in the high education since, you know, 2005, six. you know that the synopsis was the first uh, company who opened the education center uh, in, in Yerevan State University in Polytechnic. And now it's uh, the, the lot of companies are doing this. The National Instruments implemented Honor Lab, which is uh, playing very important role in the field. And uh, I think we should change the situation. We should, we should make some, some, some real changes in the, univer in the higher education sector in order to have, to have the results because these 10 years, even implementing such an efforts in the universities from business side, we don't have real results. That's why, as I said, first the education system, higher education should be free because, because in this case, we should, uh, the, the universities will consider to the quality instead of, instead of quantity. So this is the critical issue. The uh, university, yeah. What changes, um, when you say quality and not quantity, what changes in quality are you referring to? Uh, I, think for, I, think, I think first of all, uh, the, the universities should provide future-oriented education and knowledge because the time of those boys and girls will come in 10, 20 years. We are uh, straightening the education component in the ministry, we are straightening and uh, formalizing our cooperation with the universities. We are creating a council of university representatives in the ministry with whom we will formulate a, a strategy in this field. You know that I am appointed just two and a half uh, months ago. And now, uh, actually, uh, we, are, we are still in the implementation of the strategic points. You know that our companies have been investing in education programs a lot. I, I mentioned already several, 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 several of these, and this process still continues today, and it should be continued. I think the- How are they investing? Key, really? Or how are they investing? I'm curious, the companies you mentioned, how are they investing? I, I, I mentioned already that even in 2006, seven, I think, for example, Synopsis implemented the education center in Polytechnic and in Yerevan State University. Right. Now it, they have in, in Slavonic University also, and other companies also. National, National Instrument implemented uh, engineering laboratory in the Polytechnic yes. University, which is playing critical role in, this, in the quality, in the, in, the, in the high quality of the education. Good. So uh, this, I, I mean, I mean, yes, and this is this is right way, you know, of the of the implementation of, of the investment. Uh, I think the golden key to improving the quality of universities is in general education in schools, which we will probably talk uh, talk about next. You know, because right. eight years ago or or six seven years ago, when we 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 we, we understood that uh, only paying attention to the university we are not able to change the situation. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do? That's why we went, that's why we, we went to the schools. Uh, uh, that's why we went to the schools and you know about the, uh, about, about, about the projects, what we have, and uh, mainly. When you say schools, do you mean younger schools than university, like can K through twelve, like elementary schools? Secondary? Actually, actually, the main intervention uh, was uh, when UIT uh, started to implement education uh, engineering laboratories in the schools, and uh, it started from the ten years, so that the, the children from ten years are able you know, to learn engineering. They, they learn it 
they like it and they uh, choose it uh, in the end, you know, to go to the engineering, to, 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 to study engineering. And the most critical role in education problem solving belongs to the schools. The Armenian school must become a sign of quality. There is no other way. In this regard, I will single out uh, several measures that we have included in the strategy of the ministry, which of course we plan to implement jointly with the Ministry of Education. Uh, we, we act both as a customer and, and as an executor. The most important precondition is a sharp increase in the quality of STEM education for subjects. We have formulated a number of actions which can bring a real improvement, but however, can be supplemented but with other measures, and initiatives as mass certification and training of the teachers. I mean, uh, of course, I were speaking, of course, about uh, STEM, STEM, STEM subjects or education, steps, uh, STEM subject, at least in the first stage, in the first years, mandatory yearly exams. But again, we are speaking at least about the first five, six, 10 years, because the existing quality is very poor now. And we need a strong intervention in order to change the situation. Implementation of special support programs for schools with the STEM orientation, because there are several schools we have. For example, it's, it's Quant School, Anya Shirakatsi, uh, contests and funding for the creation of online educational content. And if we understood during the epidemic that, that, that it's working, this is uh, somehow the uh, problem solving uh, with the specialist. Because for example, in Tabush, I had an, I had an experience when in Bosch village, we didn't have English teacher and we started to use other, other, other teachers from other schools, you know, to, to learn our children there. Right. Content and uh, additional uh, financing program for uh, online education. Right. Uh, uh, in, in addition to mandatory funding. Uh, so, uh, or, or, or uh, and, and this is very important. We should yeah. popularize and uh, disseminate of Olympiads, which is very important. And, uh, because, because our children need to have a motivation to go somewhere. In, Nowadays, it's very important for children. Yes. Yes, Christopher Trabanian, when you were the governor of Tavush, you had mentioned that you had begun building logistics centers in Tavush. What is the status of all that now? Yes, uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm very proud from the time when I was in, in Tavush region. And uh, it was very interesting experience for me, even, uh, you know, for, for, uh, for this work. And I think that that experience is, uh, uh, is very important for doing this job in the Ministry of High Tech Industry. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Tavush Ta Ta is, uh, is, is, is a strategic. Creating a web presence requires the uh, right the first, Web.com's builder will help your business stand out from the competition. There, Robert was. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Taos, Taos is, is a uh, strategic region. Uh, and, uh, the, his position is very uh, strategic right. from, the, uh, from the, especially from the logistical point of view also. Most of the uh, cargo transportation mm -hmm. to and from Armenia is carried out through Taos, uh, to Magratash. Uh, and it is uh, and, and 230 kilometers from Bagratashen to the Russian Federation border and 320 kilometers to the port of Koti, which is the main international port destination for Armenia. Uh, two large regional logistics center, as you mentioned, were planned to be established in Azatamut village in the Bagratashen. The draft government decision has also been, uh, even has also been developed. Yeah. And we could not implement this program to the pandemic and the, and the war, but we will do our best to restart the process soon. And be, understandably, understandably. Yes, yes. It is, it is also very important, of course, to create an internal logistic chain. Right. 
especially in case of increasing the volume of agricultural products. In the, in the, in the next one or two years, uh, the, uh, the irrigation uh, years of Kavush will more than double. In a few years, it will multiply the production of uh, processing and, and food, which will require a developed logistic infrastructure. And this internal log logistic infrastructure will be very important for this. By the way, uh, like the areas close to the capital, the Tavush crop is mainly either uh, procured by processing factories or exported abroad. In this respect, a very uh, stable logistics system is embedded in the value chain of pig and uh, corn that exports. So uh, I, I am sure that uh, that will continue or all these programs. And by the way, we are working, uh, one of these programs we are doing with the, uh, with the US-based uh, business, uh, it's a chain of, a chain of markets in US, so they are now building a logistics wow. center in Tawash. I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm very proud. Of it. So it was it was very uh, interesting experience for me, and I like this job very very much. You know, I am from Tawash, and now now also I am I'm in Tawash. Uh, and you were born uh, there too, I remember reading, correct? So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, Chabanya, what about in terms of, so would you say, before we move on from education, would you say what percentage of the students currently do you think go into the tech center, graduates? Unfortunately, few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from 1,000 graduates, only 0 0.4 are going to the tech sector. Yes. So which, uh, which, is, uh, which is very small, very small volume. That's why, as I mentioned, we need strong and revolutionary interventions, both in the schools and in the universities. But of course, there is one other uh, component, tertiary education system, uh, okay, VET system, which is, uh, which is also very important uh, for, for, for this field. I mean, the education, which is starting from 15 to 18, 19, and actually, we had or we have already one very good example: uh, the, the, the uh, real school. And I am the head of board of the real school, so we yes, created cool. this with the UIT. Uh, I, I was in UIT that time, and we created this with the with the Instigate. And now we are. Uh, I think I think we have one of the best educational systems in the country. And we should replicate this in all regions. Now, actually, we are working on that. Phenomenal. That's great. Um, that's great news, Minister. I'm just going to pivot a little bit outside of the education system, as that is clearly one of the challenges. Can you speak a little bit about the startup culture? Uh, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're uh, speaking a lot about startups. We are speaking a lot about startup. And by the way, I can say that now uh, we have quite interesting success in this field. We have already uh, dozens of uh, companies who are in very, very uh, successful, uh, very, very successful process. They are raising money. You know that uh, a lot of them, of course, uh, uh, established or they are raising money in USA, but it's okay, okay, uh, because the development part of these companies are mainly in Armenia. So this is very active, uh, this is very active, uh, uh, let's say, direction in the tech industry, and uh, it's impossible uh, to imagine the development of the industry without this. To rightly uh, mention uh, that the important direction where we should have strategic and tactical plans. In, in other words, how can we capitalize our goal of becoming a, a high-tech high -tech country in nation? Uh, I, think, uh, uh, I, think, I think here a number of, uh, uh, number of issues we should, we should uh, 
solved in the country, not only because the Armenians of the world, and especially the United States of Armenia, have always played a central role in the development of Armenia's high-tech sector, not only because it is the most global sector and knows no borders and geography, not only because the knowledge of the diaspora is many times greater with its volume and quality also because we have no other option and this is our main competitive advantage. And this is not a new for us, you know, uh, even uh, in 2000 when we, we started uh, uh, or uh, even I can call it revival of Armenian uh, high-tech industry, it's mainly starting from US. And uh, now also, especially in the startup uh, infrastructure or startup uh, process movement or startup uh, environment, we see US participation, uh, US very strong participation. Uh, uh, our, our strategy does not separate Armenia and diaspora. We should uh, increase the cooperation between Armenia and diaspora if we, we would like, uh, Armenia and diaspora would like to continue the development in the start startup field. Now you, we have uh, one unicorn, sorry. Can you speak about some ex specific ways because one of the missions of these lectures is really to bridge the diaspora with Armenia. Um, can you speak a little bit about how, what role the diaspora can play in developing the high tech sector, financing opportunities, anything that taxing, you know, like um, taxing relations, anything that um, you you can think of in terms of um, helping bridge that gap and investing more from the diaspora that could be beneficial for both fronts. Actually, when we talk about the fact that our uh, characteristic line should be science and strong engineering right. education, we should provide it uh, equally in the homeland and the diaspora. That is why the uh, dominance of distance education tools is important, including on the basis of existing platforms such as the Armenian Virtual School. In uh, response to the question, uh, I think you know. Uh, no, I think it's it's already very uh, very natural uh, process in in the in the in the cooperation between Armenian tech sector in Armenia and uh, diasporas. Even when we call it Armenian tech service, tech sector, we are not uh, splitting. You know, Armenia and diasporas, and and this is this is very good approach. I think we should continue right. the development and. Uh, investment of business culture in Armenia is very important, very important. The situation is much better in Western countries. So the role of the Western diaspora is great in succeeding in this direction. It refers to a permanent process. Startup culture is a component of it. In this regard, in order to continuously improve the situation, we plan to support programs such as mandatory visits of school children to industrial enterprises, compulsory internship in middle and high schools, et cetera. So in order to change you know, their, their, their feelings and their knowledge about the business. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's it, because uh, along, along with the development of Armenia's financial system, right. the main goal of which should be to make it more uh, accessible and business oriented, it is necessary to create programs that promote access to the world's financial resources, including the activities of special consulting resources. Uh, this should be accompanied by, the, by, uh, by an increase in financial and managerial literacy. We must implement special programs, projects in Armenia to increase the level of the presence of uh, angelic and, and venture capital. You are probably aware that, uh, that the ministry now actually recently announced a co-financing program for a venture fund, which uh, emphasized uh, doubling the fund of the private investment fund uh, the, by, the, by the 9 million USD. The program of providing tax benefits to startups will continue, which is in great demand in Armenia, and which is used by almost 100% of our startups, actually. 
Tourist? In this regard, yes, in this regard, we attach great importance to paying attention to other environmental conditions, you know, which may not be, in, uh, which, 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 which maybe they are indirect, but uh, do not play less role for the development of the sector. These are the conditions in which they live and work. In the big list, I would like to single out a few of them. The first is the creation and uh, guarantee of an internal and external safe environment. No matter how difficult and unpredictable this may be, we must constantly work to raise the level of security of our country and raise awareness of that direction. The next step is to provide benefits that meet the vital requirement of the modern world, such as education, healthcare, food quality, cultural content, clean air, transportation, urban comfort, uh, etc. Along, yeah. Sorry, finish that thought, and then I'll ask you a question that's related. Yeah, we have we have already talked about education, and, and in terms of other areas, I consider it important to introduce a system of compulsory health insurance in our Yes, which will increase the quality of health services in the country, which is critical in the twenty first century. The government should increase the budget allocated to culture, develop entrepreneurship in this sphere. This is one of the area, uh, 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 one of the sector where we have a great potential, which we must capitalize and Minister serve our country and even the economy. Minister Chobanyan, going back to in a related area, you mentioned about expanding relations, strengthening relations with the diaspora, as well as other countries. Um, I just want to pivot a little bit, but it's related in, as you know, um, cyber warfare is fast becoming the most vulnerable soft spot in the defense of any nation. As you know, we have been through a hard war that was fought by technological means. So guarding information secret is the name of the game. To that point, through which country does Armenia access the World Wide Web? Is it through Russia, through Georgia? Which country is our nearest hub? Af uh, actually, the niche what we are putting in, in our, in our uh, uh, further development uh, is very wide. Uh, from the from the human resource point of view, I think the West, the West, West is the is the first direction. So, if we are speaking about the development of the human resources, we should consider to the West, U.S., mm -hmm. Europe, etc. Uh, we need a very big volume of workforce in Armenia, uh, either you know. Uh, to, to, to bring them to Armenia, either to use uh, in their countries, to do, to do outsourcing to that in that countries. This is a critical point for a lot of companies, for dozens of companies in Armenia. And this is the East, like, you know, uh, 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 like, like India, like Egypt. So, uh, and uh, I think we should uh, work, we should work with several countries, and all these directions are strategic for the country. Of course, yes. it's US. Of course, it's Russian Federation. Of course, it's China, because these are the uh, main players in the world. But we are considering several directions, uh, which who, who will bring us more safety uh, in, the, in the farther and long term, long term development. Uh, coming to the security and the defense, I prefer not to speak more about this uh, oh. and, and, uh, and, and to work on this direction more. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, uh, we should not speak more about military industry, but we should work, we should speak about uh, high tech industry because the line, you know, is very slow between high tech industry and military industry. So uh, we should have a success both in, in, in high tech sector, but also in military industry sector in order, in order of course, 
ensure our stability, uh, our stability in long term. I agree completely. And that's that that thin line is what I worry about. Or when I was asking you where the hub for our international worldwide web is, my concern was if it's true that it's in Georgia, doesn't Georgia go through Azerbaijan and could it, that compromise our international high tech, you know, information? Uh, we're, we're thinking a little bit uh, widely when we're speaking about the hub. It's not about uh, Middle East or South Caucasia or, uh, only, you know, we are, we are thinking widely. So it's a, it's a some place where we can interconnect uh, the, the, the countries and the markets. Okay. Uh, and, and this is very important. You know that Armenia is a part of the Eurasian Union, but from mm -hmm. other side is the association, associated part of EU and the, and the member of WTO, uh, which which uh, gave, gives us a lot of opportunities. That's why I think uh, real and exact time uh, to uh, considering this, you know, uh, to play the role of hub uh, between uh, Eurasian market, Western market, and of course Middle East, uh, which is very close to us, not only geographically but also culturally. Right, agreed. Um, now, Ms. Minister Chavanyan, I'm gonna go ahead and open up questions to our audience who've been waiting patiently for me to finish my interrogation. Um, I'd like to ask a question by, um, this is a historic question, Artem Saakian. He asks, Honorable Minister, Mr. Minister, after the 2018 revolution, the National Polytechnic University was declared the main source for training engineering personnel in Armenia. According to my clear information, the training of specialists and the vast majority of professors is still carried out based on the curricula adopted more than 50 years ago in the former Soviet Union. How do you see the role of the BTA ministry as well as the role of the ARPA in modern curricula implementation? Okay, uh, yes, Polytechnic Institution, uh, Polytechnic University is the number one institution in high tech for high tech industry. And uh, actually it's playing this role uh, already uh, even in this situation with the bad curriculum, etc. So as I mentioned, the problems are uh, quite deep then uh, we are considering. It's not connecting with the curriculum, etc. I think there are there are, there are critical principles which uh, gives this situation. The first one, the, as I mentioned, the education in Armenia should be free, especially in these uh, subjects where the industry needs a lot of, uh, a lot of specialists. So uh, the, the, the main issue of the Polytechnic uh, is not only in the curriculum that they adopted more than, as, as you mentioned, 50 years ago. Of course, it's not true. Uh, it's, it's, they are not using the curriculum which are adopted 50 years ago, but there are a lot of problems in the, in the university. And as I mentioned, uh, we have already a council uh, from the representatives of the universities. And now we are starting a discussion how to change the situation. Uh, the, 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 the industry is doing usually two things. They are implementing several educational programs with their curriculums, even, even uh, their teachers, et cetera. So the boys from high-tech companies are coming to the universities to teach students. And the second, the creation of the labs, the biggest intervention in this field is national instrument intervention, uh, the uh, ANEL, uh, implementation of the ANEL lab in Polytechnic University. So I think that in near future, uh, we will have an opportunity to do big changes. I hope that the political situation in the country will be stable in order to give us this opportunity. Okay. Thank you anyway for the question. Yes, yes yeah. I, I would like to emphasize again that the Polytechnic is number one uh, 
uh, one of the number one problems, but also one of the number one uh, number one opportunities for us. Yes, often the case. Um, Minister Chobanian, he followed up with a second question. Um, listening to you, he said, do you think that in order to drastically improve the efficiency of the polytechnics education process, as well as its close involvement in solving the problems of the Ministry of HTI and armed forces of the RA, it is worth transferring it from the Ministry of Education to the Ministry of HTI? Uh, I said already, I think that uh, the role of Ministry of STI or the same the role of Ministry of Economy okay. should, be, should be as a customer. So we, we should order the education for the industry. The Ministry of Science Education should be responsible for the organization of educational part. But also I mentioned that here, there is a huge lack of competence, huge lack of specialists who can give qualified education to the students. That's why it's very important to widely, widely, widely use online remote educational platforms and opportunities, what we are using already one and a half year, uh, which, which gave us this pandemic. A question that was asked, um, are you willing, is the minister willing to have advisors from the diaspora service experts? Yes, actually, I have already uh, several advisors from diaspora, advisors from diaspora, and one of them is participating, participating in this meeting, it's Michel Gautian from France. And now uh, you know that uh, uh, the, the, we have one program called eGORS, and uh, through okay. this program, through this platform, a lot of people from uh, diaspora are coming to work in the government. And now I think we are in the process to, to, to bring and to involve additional 10, 15 uh, specialists from diaspora uh, to the Ministry of High Tech Industry. Minister Chavanian, the next question comes from Ruben Lucinians, who's the director of the PIRIS, P-I-E-R-I-S Fund. He asks, Minister Chobanyan, strategy and roadmap for recovery, perhaps establishment of education system and scientific institutions. Where do we stand in the life cycle of defining it? And what are the key pillars of that strategy? You did talk a little bit about this. Yes, actually, we are now in the process of the uh, creating of the strategy. We started about uh, months, half, one, one and a half months ago. Uh, yes, and, uh, and there are several directions in this strategy. Uh, where uh, in, the, in these directions, we have also several movements already because we are working parallelly, strategically and tactically. So we are Doing, so we are making strategy, we are developing strategy, but other, from other side, we are working to implement some uh, part of that. The first pillar for the educational development uh, strategy is connecting with the STEM education. Yeah. This is the fundamental thing, and this is the number one issue, and we could, we could solve, and it could be number one advantage for Armenia and the Armenian educational system. The second, that we should use uh, alternative educational uh, experiences and platforms in order to bring more people in not only, not only long term, but also in short term period, because, because if we will not double the uh, volume of uh, high tech industry, uh, in five, six mm -hmm. years, uh, I think we've all lost this. That's why we should also to encourage the involvement uh, of the other specialists in the sector through alternative short-term educational programs. Third pillar is connecting with the tertiary education or VET education, vocational mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. institutions. V VET, V-E-T, it's vocational mm -hmm. education. Which is, uh, which is starting from 15 uh, and during three, four years, actually we will be able to provide a big volume of specialists for the, for the sector. 
but of course, uh, finally, finally, it's higher education, which is more should be connected with the R&D and science. Great. Um, speaking of a question by Ruben Injikian is, um, what is the share of R&D in the economy? And what is the share of the private sector and Academy of Sciences in it? How are you going to increase the share of R&D, research and development? It's, it's uh, fully connected with the, uh, with the industry. So uh, in order to develop the volume of R&D in the economy, we should develop the industry. What, how, how we started, let's, let's speak a little bit about that. In 2000s, yes, it was uh, mainly outsourcing companies who were working for other multinational or, or, or other companies. So in 2010, about 10 years ago, we starting to go from the outsourcing to the, to the product development. And in that part, that, in that moment, we started to bring a lot of R&D to the industry. And now we have quite big R&D uh, component in high tech industry, which is, which is about 20, 25%, which is very good. So it means that it, it, uh, we, we, we need to involve a lot of people in order to keep the development of the industry. And in this field, very important role uh, was played national instruments in 2010 uh, because it's the, it was the beginning of development of engineering sector. It was mm -hmm. because before that, it was mainly about software development. Mm -hmm. So and, and already 10 years we are working also in engineering field where the uh, component of R&D is also very big. And now the new stage for Armenian high-tech industry, I think it's about manufacturing. Great, thank you. Um, Minister Chavanyan, actually this is a good friend, uh, an old friend I should say, Dr. Armina Lulejian is asking, can you please comment on your experience with maturity models and how they relate to the high-tech industry in Armenia? Thank you, Armina. Yes, uh, you know, uh, it's very important, but high-tech it's about everything. So when uh, from other side, it's, it's, it's uh, mainly one industry, vertical, one vertical, but usually it's horizontal. And the development of the country is interconnected with high tech uh, uh, directions very closely. Uh, when we're speaking about agriculture, for example, we cannot have developed and competitive agriculture uh, we, without involvement of high-tech industry, where even we are speaking about healthcare, we cannot uh, speak about qualified services without high-tech involvement. So even education, you mentioned already that, that the involvement of high-tech in education as an online uh, educational platform or, uh, or, or mood education, et cetera, it's, it's again, uh, or, or automated education. Uh, so uh, it's, it's again, very big advantage for us. That's why we're considering our participation in our life very widely. And the role of high tech in the Ministry of High Tech Industry, I think in this, in order to increase the development, uh, to accelerate the development in other, in several fields using high tech or IT. Mm -hmm. okay, and here and here the experience in, in several in other in other uh, in other fields of economy or life you know, it's very important to use uh, in this role and I think in near future we will have real uh, interesting really interesting uh, results in this field and uh, but but again, Number one problem and number one question for us is in the education. If they say, what would be the uh, your in, in main activity in year one two years? When if if you will do only one thing, I would say to be involved uh, as strong as possible in education, the development of education. 
And, and uh, just along those lines, in terms of restructuring the educational system, would part of it be an integration? How would you do an integration of high tech in all aspects of education systemically? Uh, yes, uh, uh, of course, of course, when we are speaking about uh, high tech in education, uh, the main issue is in the content. It's not in the platforms because there are a lot of platforms we can use. But what is the important part of that? And what can be the advantage for you or not? Uh, it's, it's a content. So again, we are coming uh, to the fundamental part of the education and we should use our competence on that to create, to create online educational or electronic content or digital content for our children, for our students, for all of us. Oh, great. Uh, Michael Dabudian um, comments, one concrete point in cooperation with France is the convention signed in June between the Toulouse three universities, hold on, sorry, <clears throat> and the French university in Armenia. A master's in AI, which is artificial intelligence, is beginning in September. This will give an Armenian diploma, a diploma as well as a French diploma, and both will be recognized. The objective is really to prepare PhDs and renew the number of researchers in Armenia. And as such, more research programs will be set up. Um, is this one of the examples that you think moving forward we should build on, Minister? Yes, of course, the cooperation is the solution in this. And we should, voice, uh, we should use the success stories, the advanced uh, experience and French uh, participation. You know, that already is quite big in Armenian educational system through uh, Armenian French University. And this is the second intervention from the then side. And uh, this is just appointed agreement uh, between Toulouse 3 and the French University of Armenia. And the government gave them the land in the, in the uh, uh, physics, physics Institute. Uh, they will build new building. Uh, and I think it will be one of the strong points in the educational development of the country. Minister Chobanyan, what about the institutes of the Academy of Sciences and universities? How can they be further integrated? for advanced experimental and practical education. Yes, this is a big issue actually for the country. And this is the uh, topic for very strong discussion, especially in the last six months. And it started also from the field, from the IT sector. If you know uh, about the initiative called uh, Ditush, uh, Actually, it started from the IT sector in order to help the uh, scientific sector grow. You know that there are already some changes in the Academy of Science, in the management of the Academy of Science. Uh, we have new president, uh, Dr. Sayan. I think that now is the time to discuss with them this difficult, uh, this difficult topic in order to solve the uh, problems. You know, uh, the situation with these uh, academic institutes is not very good. And uh, I have been in several of them in two months uh, after the appointment. And I think, uh, I think it will not be easy. Uh, it will not be easy to solve the problems because we don't have yet enough volume to uh, you know, send them, to order them to work on that. But the budget also is changing. And the government increased already budget for uh, science. And I think uh, after, in the, from that 2022, we will have uh, more opportunities to make some changes in this world. I don't want, I, I cannot actually, I cannot actually uh, to speak about this detailed, uh, because it's not my field. As I mentioned, uh, we should be a uh, customer and we should order uh, or, or order some topics which are interesting for our field, for the, for the 
high tech. And now we're considering uh, close cooperation with the scientific institutions regarding with the uh, contracts what we have, for example, in military industry field. Yeah. Um, I want to honor Lucina Topachian's uh, comment from the Collaborative Educational Project. She said, I agree with Mr. Chobanian that education should be free in order to focus on quality. Students can also study at the university and only after graduating and getting a job, they can pay their fees or they can donate their time to the universities. So yes. we have several. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions I invite you to ask? Uh, we have a couple minutes left remaining with the Honorable Minister Hayek Chobanyan. Um, if there's any other last minute questions, I'll take them. Other than that, it looks like we've sadly run out of time so we are going to have to leave the conversation there i really want to thank you um mr minister for taking these hard questions and to all of you for engaging and watching thank you for me anisha badian and the whole team here at the arpa institute i'd now like to hand the floor over to dr panasian dr panasian Thank you very much, Ani, and thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chobanyan, for, for this excellent interview and the very uh, interesting programs that you have suggested. We hope that everything that you started will be achieved successfully, and ARPA Institute and everybody here, I guess, is ready to help in any way we can. We have a very exciting panel discussion in the uh, coming um, weeks actually on July 24th. It's about the Baj Accelerator, 10 Business Unicorns in Armenia. It will again be moderated by Dr. Shabazian. And uh, the participants are um, Emma Arakelian, uh, Armen Kherlopian, Albert Stepanian, Vahe Andonians, and Paolo Pirjanian. You will receive the announcements soon, and you are all invited to join us. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ani. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Understand. you. Thank you. I would like uh, to, uh, to to ask you if it is possible to organize uh, some working discussion uh, with the ARPA uh, in near days. Actually, in two weeks, I am going to have a press conference with the. With, with, with the whole presentation of the strategy, and everything that we are going to do in year four or five years. Now we are working on that. So before that, I would uh, like to have a discussion also with you uh, because I'm discussing you know, the draft with the main players uh, of the field. And I would like to have uh, in two weeks when will be uh, appropriate or convenient for you, please. Just let me know. Great. Okay, we'll organize that kind of a discussion with you and also with a few more experts. So, yes, we'll do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you again. Thank you. I wish all the best.